Hi, so I'm fascinated by hubless wheels. I mean, who wouldn't be? They're super cool and they're super sexy. But surprisingly enough, when you go around looking on how to make one, there's very little information about it. And I spent quite a while looking into this and I came across something that seemed, at first sight actually, a bit mean-spirited. The guy said, there's no such thing as a hubless wheel. And I thought, okay, that's a bit harsh. He said, what it is, is where the axle is made big enough to the entire wheel and hollow. And I thought, ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So suddenly the idea of hubless wheels made sense to me, and I thought I'd give it a go making some, because I recently acquired a couple of these. These are obviously um, cycle rims. They're actually quite nice. They're, they're uh, an aluminium rim, and um, they're obviously from a disposed bike. And I thought I could make those into a hubless wheel and we can put a tyre on it and we'll have ourselves a couple of hubless wheels maybe to make a bike out of, something like that. Now in order to do this, what we need is a smooth surface on the inside and you can feel where the spokes went through. It's like a steel insert. So I went round one and just drilled off the top of those steel inserts. So there's one way I've drilled them off. And when you drill them off, all you then need to do is take a screwdriver and push through from the other side and the entire insert will just pop out. So you need to remove all of those and give that a going over with a bit of sandpaper to make that smooth. Okay, that's it. If I roll that along, you can see it works. Uh, it was actually surprisingly easy to do. Now, um, you can see this is a basic prototype while I'm working out ideas, because what they normally do is they have a big ring of metal here, and they effectively put a whole load of bearings around there. And I was thinking about doing that, and then I thought, hmm, that's a lot of work. And I had a look at the different kinds of bicycles that there were, and there is currently a collapsible bicycle very similar to this. Instead of having the central rod keeping this and this apart, the rod comes out here, and this bit's on another rod, and you collapse the rod, the wheels come out, and it folds up to the size of an umbrella, which I thought was cool. So it's much more like that bicycle than it is like a motorcycle. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, because a motorcycle, of course, is a big old engine, and it's going to red and knots. You need an awful lot more bearings. Uh, a cycle, really, you don't need that much. Now, if you were to put pressure on here without this support bar, there's a chance that the wheel would collapse because rims really can't take it, particularly if they're going over bumps. But if you actually apply the pressure here at the bottom where this bottom roller is, you don't have that problem. This then isn't supporting anything, it's just stopping the top wobbling around a little bit. All of the pressure is down here and, and that's the bit that takes the force. This bit just stops it wobbling and that's why that commuter bike works so well. Now I've left this loose just so I can take it out really easily to show you how it's made, and it's made really simply. Okay, this is just a carriage holding a couple of these roller bearings. You buy these online. They're uh, roller bearings covered in nylon tyres, that's all they are, and that's a single carriage, and it's doing that job. But like I say, if we had the bar here and a scissor, then that would just do that, and it would do exactly the same job. What well, this carriage is, is two of those roller bearings on the bottom, and you can see them there. There are two of these, on a screw, held apart with nylon washers in an iron frame. And that's all I did. I cut two bits of iron, just stand that up, two bits of iron, four of those um, tyre bearings on a bit of rigid frame, pop it on there, and you're off. That's all, all you actually need to do on something like a bicycle. On a motorcycle, sure, you perhaps want to go all the way around and put those bearings on. Now, there's a couple of things to notice. This tyre... A uh, wheel rim has a bevel to it. So do these, they have a little bevel on them. And that bevel is actually just on the other bevel. So they're not riding in the rim like that. The rim is riding in between them, so that acts as guides for the actual wheels themselves. So those wheels have their own guides built into the bearing. Now, I've made this prototype to work out my ideas, because I actually love this. I think it's really quite super. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is something along those lines where we have that crisscross coming out here so that we can fold that down, pick it out, and it's collapsible. Pop that back in, fold the crisscross up, and then suddenly we've got our hubless motor, a hubless um, wheel. 
and I like that a lot because I've just said it, I want to do a hubless motor. Now one of the reasons these are like that is you can see that there's a fair old distance here. And if you remember that thing that we did on gears made out of toothed belt, what I'm going to do is buy some toothed belt, glue it onto this rim so that this whole thing becomes one massive cog. Now obviously that's going to be a few days so we'll just have to buy the toothed belt. But that's the idea. There is one other issue that's here. This is the valve. We need to re-drill the valve so it sticks out the side and doesn't get in the way of anything so that we can actually uh, pump it up or repair it or do something so that that valve isn't actually catching. Now once I do that, obviously, and I've got the toothed belt, what I can do is stick the motor, in fact anywhere actually, to be honest. Remember, it's going to be like a scissor, like that. So the motor can go here, the motor can go here, the motor can go just about anywhere. So we can put the motor on there, and then we'll have a hubless bicycle, electric bicycle. I kind of like that a lot, and that's what I'm going to be working on. But I wanted to show you the prototype so that you had the idea of how easy these hubless um, wheels are, in fact, to make. It took about an hour to cut this bit of steel and screw those pre-made things on. It really didn't take long. I've only used six, so there are only three points of contact. Like I said, the main pressure is going to have to be on here. So any seat, we're going to have to bear onto this. So we might have to put a stay up here to have the seat maybe here and, and bearing straight down, or maybe here bearing on the scissor. But all the weight is going to be transferred here, not here. If you transfer the weight here, you'll probably buckle the wheel. But having it down at the bottom here means that you're not really going to have that much trouble with it and it's going to be really easy to engineer the rest of it. And I thought that was really cool. Obviously it's missing its tyre. When it gets its tyre on it stands about like that because they're fat old tyres. But I thought I'd show you that where we were with it, illustrate where we're going with it and um, hopefully give you some ideas on how you can make these hubless wheels as well. Like I say, if you want to make a motorcycle one, you need to cut two rings of steel, put the bearings into the rings, and then fit your tyre into those rings of steel. With something like a bicycle, three points of contact is going to be fine. Anyway, I hope that was of interest, and um, thank you very much for watching.